Hi, I'm Chad Lorridge, Product Manager at Music Max Distribution, U.S. distributor for Elysia, Wes Audio, and Friendstein Professional Audio Products. Today I want to spend some time with you going over a setup that might just be the perfect system you're looking for. Many of us might find ourselves in a small space, either working at home, on a studio project, or in a situation where a dedicated mixing room just isn't possible. We may rely on a majority of in-the-box mixing, but would really like a few key analog devices to support our work to bring the richness and vibe that analog devices can bring to our mixes. Today we're going to look at a setup that doesn't take a whole lot of real estate, but gives us the flexibility of adding some nice outboard processing to our mix. Let's take a look at this setup. We have a MacBook laptop running Avid's Pro Tools software. The computer is connected via USB to our main audio interface, the Focusrite 18i20. Then we have a Fredenstein Bento S6, a six-slot chassis, and the Alesia Cube. This is interfaced as inserts. We're going to dive deep into both these units here in a little bit. The overall idea of this setup is to continue mixing with our favorite in-the-box plugins, but then run certain channels out of Pro Tools through these select analog devices, and then back into Pro Tools to be integrated with our mix. The first thing we need to do is to look at how to make our proper physical connections. Then we'll move to Pro Tools and show how to make up inserts for our 500 gear. And finally, we'll explore some mixing options with these 500 modules. As I mentioned, the 18i20 will be our main audio interface. It's going to be used to monitor our main outputs of Pro Tools and also act as multiple connection points to and from the 500 modules. The 18i20 in particular is a really great box because it has a lot of I.O. We need all those inputs and outputs to use as inserts for our analog devices on various tracks in our mix. As I mentioned, the Bento 6S chassis has a space for six slots, uh, which could be used in really any single channel slots or any combination of one or two channel 500 modules. We have some really cool modules racked up in the chassis that will definitely help us out in our mix and give us some nice analog character to go along with the internal pl plug-in processing. To connect the 18i20 to the chassis, we first have to take note of the cabling we need. As you can see, the 18i20 has balanced quarter inch inputs and outputs, while the Bento chassis has XLR connectors. These, of course, are totally compatible with each other. We just need to make sure we have the right cabling. Male and female XLR on the chassis side and XLR on the interface side. When we're plugging these devices in as inserts, we need to know how our doll handles inserts. In this case, we're talking about Pro Tools. Remember that the idea of inserts means that audio will play from the track in Pro Tools, leave the digital world out to our chassis, and then come right back into the same track. Some dolls handle this a little bit differently. With Pro Tools, you need to take the matching channel number on your interface, use it for both the input and the output of your external device. So for example, if you use output one to send to your first module, you'll need to use input one to return back to your interface. The 18i20 system by default reserves output 1 and 2 for our main monitors. And even though this is configurable and changeable in the Focusrite's control app, we can work with that setup. We'll take a closer look at the control app here in a second. First, let's look at our modules and how we plan to get them hooked up. With this setup, we're going to have six inserts to work with. The first two modules are the Wes Audio Dione and the Hyperion. The Dione is a VCA bus compressor and will sound great as glue on our drum bus. The Hyperion is a fully analog stereo parametric EQ, and we'll use that on our master bus for our full mix. We'll get to some of the details of these devices here in a little bit, but one incredibly unique feature is the ability to control both of these devices with a plug-in, which are connected to our computer via USB. Next, we have the Fredenstein Artistic Leveler and the Artistic EQ. The Leveler is an opto compressor, providing really smooth and musical compression characteristics. The Artistic EQ is an absolute must, three-band EQ with a parametric design and Fredenstein's tube emulation color switch. We'll take advantage of both of these great units by running them in series of each other for our lead vocal. Finally, we have the Elysia envelope in this really unique desktop chassis called the Cube. This box was developed by Ruben Tilgner, the designer of the original Transient Designer at SPL. This new souped up design allows you to add and subtract attack and sustain on your source. You can even use it as a high quality two band EQ if you need it. For our setup today, we'll be sending the output of channel one into channel two so we can get some EQ and transient shaping in series for our snare drum. Okay, let's dive into the back of our setup again. You'll see our main speakers are connected to outputs one and two, and we'll set those as our main outs in Pro Tools. 
Outs and ins three and four are for our Dione compressor. Outs and ins five and six are for the Hyperion EQ. Output seven goes to the artistic leveler, while the input seven comes from our EQ. Here's where we can switch the Audio 5.6 link switch on the back of the Bento 6S. This will push the audio from the leveler internally into the EQ without any extra cabling. So again, insert seven will be used both for our leveler and our EQ in series. Finally, output eight goes to the input of the envelope cube channel one. To get that signal over to channel two, we're gonna use a short balanced quarter to quarter cable to connect the output of channel one to channel two. Then we'll connect the channel two output back into input eight of the 18 i 20 And just like the Fredenstein modules, insert eight will be both channels of the envelope in series. Now that the physical connections are made, let's take a look at some of the software setup. Focusrite Control provides some internal mixing for zero latency monitoring when recording. We won't really need that type of setup for this situation. We can go to the output tab and first set up our monitor outputs one and two to playback one and two. This will be our main outputs from Pro Tools. Then we set outputs three through eight to be playback three through eight from our DAW, just like it is. The inputs on the 18i20 are already configured to be line inputs, so we're good to go in the input settings tab. Pro Tools doesn't require too much to get our modules routed either, but we can verify the I.O. and do some labeling. Let's go to the setup menu and down to the I.O. window. So we can see we have the inputs and outputs of our 18i20. We're not so concerned about those tabs because really we're using that 18i20 as insert. So let's switch over to the insert tab. So again, insert one and two, the outputs one and two are being used as our main outs. So we're really working with inserts three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We can go ahead and do some labeling here to match our modules in the 6S. So insert three, four, we'll label that as the Dione. And inserts five, six will be the Hyperion. Now insert seven is a combination of the leveler and the EQ. So we'll just call that the Fred, like that. And then insert eight will be our envelope cube. So we'll just call that cube. And there we go. There's our labeling that should show up in Pro Tools for us. All right, let's test our inserts. I have a mix here for the song Last All Night by the band Donna. We're gonna combine our in-the-box processing with these great analog devices for a really powerful combination. Let's have a quick listen. It's a very traditional rock band, full set of drums, guitars, the Leslie, lots of vocals and background vocals. So I say we test out the Dione on our Drum Master. Again, the Dione is an SSL-inspired VCA compressor that sounds just great on bus masters and on the stereo bus. Plus, we can actually control this analog hardware with a plug-in. The USB connector on the front of the device gives us that control. So let's go ahead and instigate our Dione insert. You can see it here. Here's a list of all of our inserts that we labeled. And here is the Dione control. So again, no audio runs through this plug-in. It all runs analog through the actual 500 module. Let's have a listen. Go ahead and jump forward here to where the full drums come in. So I already have it in the circuit. We, of course, can bypass here on the front of the module. We could bypass, we could make all the controls on the module uh, interface itself here in the, the GUI. So if we want to push this a little bit harder, maybe we'll bring the wet all the way up so we can really hear it working. adding a lot of energy to those drums. Let's pull the mix back so we retain some of the attack of the drums and then bring up that energy. While we're on the drums, let's go ahead and jump over to our snare drum and insert the Elysia Cube. So go ahead and solo those. Here's our cube, we'll go ahead and put that on there. And you can see I actually have a gate, internal gate, uh, on that track already. Then it goes through the cube and then it comes back into Pro Tools for some compression. As I mentioned, the envelope is a transient shaper that gives us control over the attack and sustain of the sound. The envelope can also be used as a high quality two band EQ. So for our snare, we have both of these processes going on. The snare track is coming in on channel one, and we have that set up as an EQ, and then it jumps over into channel two for our transient shaping. Let's kick the insert in and have a listen. Mm. 
All right, we'll go ahead and bypass both channels. You can hear our added EQ. And then the transient shaping on the right side, we can pull the attack in, pull it out, of course, if we wanted to. For our purposes, I really want this snare drum to kind of stick out in the mix a little bit more, so adding that transient will help it push out a little bit. Let's listen in context with the whole drum kit. There we go, so it really pushes out there in the mix on the whole drums. All right, now onto our vocal. I already have a one band EQ and a de-esser on the channel with some internal plugins. Let's go ahead and pop the insert in, and the vocal now is going through our artistic leveler and then out to the EQ and back into Pro Tools. The opto compressor on the leveler is really smooth and musical. We can get pretty aggressive with it and then back it off and blend it with the mix control. The EQ then will give us a little bit of lift on our vocal to help it pop out of the mix. Let's check it out here. We'll go right to where the vocals come in. But I keep so I've got them in right now, and you can see I've got a pretty big amount of compression going on on the leveler. I'll go ahead and turn both of the EQ and the compression off for a moment here. So I can push that input up quite a bit. And then again, we have the ability to adjust the mix. So full compression, you can hear it's a very, very transparent compression. But if we want to retain again some of those transients and energy from the original vocal, we can back that mix off a little bit. And then again, it's going through our EQ internally on the 6S, so we'll go ahead and, and so that really lifts it. I have a little bit of high end, a little bit of upper mid register, and then a little bit of body on that vocal. Let's see what it sounds like in context. So that compression keeps it in the front of the mix and the EQ lifts it up out on top. Let's listen without the EQ. Lastly, we'll give the whole mix a lift with the Wes Audio Hyperion on the stereo bus. This super clean four band parametric is really transparent and can be used in a few different ways, dual mono, stereo, or in mid side EQ. Again, because it's Wes Audio, we can control the unit from a plug-in over USB. We can even automate the plug-in to change EQ parameters during certain parts of the song, like I have here. So if you take a look at my master fader, you can see I have automation that goes from one EQ setting during the verse to another EQ setting during the chorus to give us a little bit of lift in that high end. Let's have a listen to that transition. And it's spot on. We're really used to being able to automate our processes inside of Pro Tools. But the fact that we're doing this on our analog hardware is a really cool feature. We can go in and uh, even further and save these as presets and recall them anytime we open up Pro Tools. We can make it last all night, all night. Silence and silence is my queen. Do you want to take away these memories? Yes, I even took a prayer. Glory, hallelujah, amen. So there you have it. Depending on your needs, you may find that this setup is exactly what you need to blend your in-the-box production with some key 500 series pieces of analog gear. It's a small form factor that can really have an impact on your mixes. As always, if you have any questions about any of the devices used in this overview, including Wes Audio, Fredenstein, Alicia, or Focusrite, be sure to get in touch with your Sweetwater sales engineer. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see more videos like these, click here. Or start at Sweetwater.com for all of your music, instrument, and pro audio needs. 